Hello everyone, welcome back, welcome back to another video of my channel. I am Kishal, I hope you all are doing well. So this is a podcast video as you all came to know from the thumbnail. Uh, so I am honored to interview uh, Sandeep Nityananda. Uh, he was all in and one for the ISRO recruitment that happened last year in 2021. Uh, so he has shared his journey in this particular podcast that will be coming up. Uh, so what I have experienced uh, from this uh, particular interview or podcast uh, I mean, I mean, his journey will immensely motivate you all aspirants who are aiming for aiming for any competitive exam in in near future. So Sandeep, uh, he he was he graduated his uh, B Tech in two thousand sixteen. Since then, he was preparing for all the competitive exams, including GATE, ISRO, BARC, and and many others. And you know, particularly in ISRO journey, he failed four times and uh, he failed to crack it in 2016 he failed to crack it in 2017 twice and then he failed to crack, crack it in 2018 also and finally he was able to crack it in <coughs> 2000, uh, 2021 i mean the last time because uh, you know this this time recruitment was the whole process was going on around for two years because of the covid so what i have learned like his his whole journey like he didn't give up i mean he was doing his m tech then he was doing his job but he was keep on you know preparing for the competitive uh, competitive exam so i think his journey the video that is coming up this will uh, you know immensely motivate all the aspirants who are uh, looking for all this competitive exam so i'll be going into that uh, interview now so before starting the interview if you are new to this particular channel please subscribe my channel hit the bell icon so that you get all the notifications regularly now without further ado let's just start into the uh, today's video the first question, I mean, you can just introduce yourself and tell a brief about yourself so that everybody can, you know, have a background about yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sandeep Nityanandan and I come from Kerala. Uh, I did my B.Tech in uh, Computer Science and Engineering from uh, Sripati Institute of Management and Technology. I made 2016 pass out. After that, uh, I did my M.Tech in Computational Linguistics, which deals with natural language processing. I did it from uh, Government Engineering College, Palakkad. And I completed it in 2019. Then after that, I had been working in last night for almost past uh, two years. Then I wrote uh, ISRO exam in 2020 and I got selected in ISRO. Right now, I'm working in uh, uh, ISRO Trivandrum. Uh, my center is LPSC, Liquid Propulsion System Center. So, Sandeep, when and why did you decide to appear for ISRO? I mean, what was the thing that motivates you? Why did you decide to write the ISRO? Yeah, to be honest, like I for initially the journey was uh, similar to gate preparation. I just wanted to get into IITs. That was the initial thought process. ISRO was not there in my mind uh, actually. But then after some time, uh, the like uh, working for one of the premier organizations in the country, that thing motivated me uh, to uh, work for like the uh, Chandrayaan mission, the Mars uh, orbiter mission. Like those missions, like it uh, gave me a thought that I should contribute something to my country. So like being a computer science graduate and like ISRO space was also one of my favorite areas. So like the both these areas coincided and then ISRO was like the only uh, thought that came into my mind after that. So like that motivated me, like you can contribute something to your country. So then uh, why not I uh, try and join ISRO and do that? That motivated me. So uh, you you were preparing for GATE since uh, this 2016 yeah. when you it's 2016, yes. Okay, okay. And you, you cracked it. I mean, uh, you did your MTEC or? Yeah, I, yeah, that's what I would like. My gate rank was not that good, to be honest. Like, yeah. uh, okay. my I did my gate coaching from Hyderabad for one year. Then after that, I don't remember the exact rank. I got in a range of 4,500. So based okay. on that rank, I joined my M Tech college. Okay, uh, okay. But the good thing is that this specialization that was having was not, uh, like, it's not everywhere. So that uh, specialization has got a value. Like natural oh. language processing, that oh, has got yeah. a value. So I did my M Tech there. But continuously, what was in my mind was that I'll try to get into some IITs parallel. So I prepared for GATE continuously. That is oh. the thing which helped me a lot. Like in, I wrote in 2016, I did not qualify. Then in 2017, I wrote and I got 4,500. 2018, okay. I wrote, then it reduced something. I don't remember the exact rank, somewhere around 3,000. 2019, I wrote around uh, 1,900, I think. 2021, then I, it went into uh, 1,400. So I kept on preparing. I did not stop my GATE preparation. So that helped me a lot. Like. Uh, to get into the uh, to clear the ISRO written test also. Even yeah. ISRO exam also, I've been writing continuously uh, from 2016. So preparation you are continuously taking, though yeah. you have 
okay 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 that's why it helped you that yeah, i was yeah. trying to understand i mean once you joined a mtech course it's very tough for people to continue the preparation because yes. everybody used to leave the preparation okay okay that's why you you are able to uh, crack it now can you please uh, tell us that how did you prepare for the written test i mean how was your overall experience yeah, because right. you appeared quite sometimes right yes. i'm mean, not single time yeah from isro experience what have what helped me was like i had continuous failure so i knew what to what was the right thing to do and what was the uh, thing that you shouldn't do in exam hall like i i wrote in 2016 i did not qualify i wrote twice in 2017 i did not qualify even in 2018 i wrote i did not qualify so if you are telling from uh, the perspective of practicing previous year questions that matters a lot like with every exam uh, any other exam uh, like any other exam isro also the previous year questions matters a lot that is the first and foremost thing the other thing which uh, helped me was that like i prepared whatever that was necessary i did not over prepare things like i knew what was uh, the focused uh, questions that isro asked then how fast you should answer because in 80 minutes we have to i mean uh, in one and a half hours you have to answer 80 questions so the right. time uh, time span is very less so we have to be very accurate that is the other thing so i prepared whatever that was necessary i mean my experience helped me a lot okay 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 and how was the question i mean uh, what is your uh, understanding i mean is it too tough or it is from the gate questions only i mean how was your understanding so uh, what i felt was that based on my previous experiences the questions of are of level of gate one mark but the thing is that you uh, you have to be fast you cannot think and wait for to do a particular question if you on the first attempt if you are able to read the question and understand it and if you know you can answer it you should answer it else you leave that question because that one question cannot determine your uh, mark because there will be other questions which are waiting for you so the thing is that you have to be very quick in the sense we have, we have to make quick decisions whether to leave the question or whether to attempt it that is the first and foremost thing in isro because the cut off can vary drastically because the paper you cannot expect the pa- the paper is like uh, it usually ranges from easy to medium the questions are not that tough but then uh, questions can come outside the gate syllabus sometimes the questions can come out of like uh, the areas which we do not usually tend to focus upon questions can come from that also so we should not get worried about that uh, focus on your strong part and you should answer those questions uh, which you can answer easily that is what uh, I, that is what i did okay okay and yeah i mean many people has this question like few questions come from software engineering and this uh, web technology and all right mm-hmm. so should they focus on that part or only the part that is you know kind of intersecting with the gate syllabus what is your thought yeah. on that so my thought is that like i prepared for software engineering a bit uh, based on the previous year questions but i did not go into the web technology because that part is a huge thing and you cannot expect like which questions would come so what right. i did was that i stick to the gate subjects like gate subjects i made everything in a good manner like i was proper then i prepared a little bit of software engineering also that's what i did i did not over focus on every other subject because the time is limited so we will not be able to recollect it also because if we study more subjects then the time and even it yeah. it, it might not be the case that that quiz, that uh, subject might be even asked that is also there so i sticked on to gate subjects plus software engineering a bit that's what i did okay so 2021 you were able to crack the written test um, not before that no uh, the, uh, i cracked only uh, the written test once in 2020 i wrote the exam and i think the result came around in may 2020 so i cracked it only once rest every time it was a failure only that good only yeah i mean you cracked the written test and you cracked the interview also yeah. on the same year yeah, same goes, for yeah. my case what happened the first time i didn't crack the written test the second time i cracked the written test but not the interview <laughs> the third time i was able to crack the board okay that's good okay so and and what was uh, the case for the last four attempts where you were not able to crack the written test uh, whether it was too close to the cut off or yeah like sometimes i went close to the cut off like by uh, one question or two questions i missed sometimes uh-huh. i i missed it by two three uh, questions so like it was cut and miss like it was on to a closer range but the thing is that this time when i wrote i as far as i remember out of 240 the exam marks is coming i mean some questions were omitted so around 214 it was the mark so i scored 108 this was the lowest mark that i had scored in all my written exams but still oh. the paper this time it was like little bit on Very from hard. the different side so that's why uh, that's why i was able to clear the cut off so the cut off this time was around 98 it was the lowest as far as i remember oh, you see yeah, the yeah, cut off yeah. ranges in from 120 right, right. plus 120 even in 2017 yeah. if you see both the cases it was at yes. 140 plus 140 yeah it, it, the thing is that you cannot expect a uh, single same pattern 
some uh, in 2017 as far as i remember one uh, iteration it was 180 plus i remember right, the second right. iteration it was around 120 plus so right. the range of the cut off varies drastically it depends upon that paper what i understand is like uh, if they if, if they suppose if the vacancy is 40 so they used to call uh, eight time students for the interview yeah so like 14 into 8 320 so top 320 people they will select and based on that i think they will choose the cutoff yes, that's how I, the cutoff yeah yeah is. that is how that is how it is drastically changing it's not fixed and how much score how much score those 320 people will get based on yeah, that the that's it will, that so you can't really on a cutoff and prepare for the exam Right, because some right. people would tell you have to uh, answer 60 questions but then questions might be so difficult you might not be able to answer the questions so based on the paper you have to handle it that's what i okay. felt okay okay and then if you once you are selected for the interview then how did you prepare for the interview i mean that was like uh, the if i tell like i was least expecting to get selected that was the okay. first and foremost thing because my marks was like it, i counted it like 10 or 20 times to check if one note it would be uh, proper or not but then when results came around in may 2020 i guess but then okay. covid came so like okay. uh, the interview was like uh, there are two things like one thing which helped me was that like due to covid i was working from home so like mm. i was able to complete my work then i was able to prepare Right. but there was an uncertainty like when would the exam i mean interview happen there wasn't a fixed time like usually uh, there was like two to uh, within two to three months the interview would happen but uh, my interview happened in march 2021 almost seven to eight months gap was there uh, because of covid there yeah, because of covid so like what happened was that uh, it helped me a lot in the sense i was able to read from standard textbooks i uh, mm-hmm. listened to nptel lectures which was necessary so uh, that uh, that gap had helped me a lot Uh, so i prepared yeah. uh, reading the previous re- interview experiences then one thing which helped me a lot was that i after uh, doing a uh, learning or a particular subject i uh, read the questions of uh, i mean previous interview experience and explained it loud looking into the mirror that okay. is one thing which some people might find it silly even in the initial phase i found it silly but that helped me a lot because i was able to uh, properly explain it even okay. though you know the concept if you are not mm-hmm. able to explain it they won't understand they that won't. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So that speaking skill matters a lot. That helped me, like speaking okay. in front of a mirror. Right, right, right. And uh, so you prepare all the subjects, or you are preparing for some subject as you say, favorite subject and some. So like uh, I, as they say, I was prepared for the worst. Then what? But what I did was like I prepared like uh, operating system, data structures and algorithms, then TOC, computer organization architecture, and computer networks to an extent. The other four subjects I prepared in depth. but what i did was i prepared all the subjects to an extent that if they ask me something i should be able to answer something rather okay. than uh, sitting and telling them i don't know i prepared almost all the subjects even software engineering i prepared but okay. i did not prepare into a too much depth because if i focused on every subjects i wouldn't be able to complete it and i would in the because that wouldn't be much useful also so uh, three four subjects as my favorite subjects i prepared in depth rest i had a basic overview so that if they ask something i'll be able to answer so that in that manner i prepared okay and did you prepare for your this mtech specialization this nlp or whatever yeah i prepared a bit for nlp but then they did not ask much about that but then machine learning but one thing which helped me was that i did my mtech uh, project in uh, machine learning and i was working in machine learning uh, area so they asked me from machine learning so that practical experience helped me a lot in uh, answering those machine learning questions i think that helped me in the interview Okay, okay. And how was the overall experience interview? I mean, when you enter, then what will happen? Yeah. The day I mean, experience. The, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I felt fear as well as when I entered the room, I felt goosebumps because, like, I was waiting for this thing from 2016 onwards. Like, I was continuously First writing. People tell me it was online or offline. I it was online interview because of the COVID situation. So the okay. whole scenario changed. Like, uh, till uh, all the interview experiences which I prepared, like uh, from every source, it was offline only. But the whole yeah. scenario changed when it was online. yeah that yeah. is the first and foremost thing uh, then the other thing was like i felt very tense because like this is the first time other than usual it interviews i had uh, for faced a central government or like you can say uh, those kind of interview that it was my first time so i was like i was waiting for this thing to happen because from 2016 i was preparing for this but then when i was feeling very afraid as well as i was feeling excited also like i was expecting what would they ask me that was the first and also you know thing. when when you 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 were trying for so long and you were able to crack the retent test for the first time yeah. then i i still remember when i was also in trivandrum for my first attempt i mean for, for attempt for the interview i was also thinking that if i can't crack it then i have to again start from the basic i yes. mean again prepare again give the retent test again yeah. come for the interview 
uh, yeah so these things also will be you know in your mind right yeah that thing con- that fear factor has, uh, like it, if you fell for fall for that fear factor then you are gone because the interview as you know even you had attended right like the interview right. is hardly 20 to 25 minutes maximum so right. they ha- ask you rapid questions you have to answer it rapidly so what happened with me was like i told uh, they one thing which helped me was that i was confident i i i fe- i made myself look confident i okay. uh, think i told myself that you can crack it uh, because you had prepared it for so long that right. was the thought process which i had then when i entered into the interview itself i mean i did not uh, show my fear to them i mean i tried to make myself look confident and ca- i calmed down myself then the thing was that from the questions they asked like i never expected the, even the first question what they asked me was so first of all center. where where is where is the interview center yeah uh, the... my center was in trivandrum only because this time Trivandrum-only. they gave an option to choose the interview center so okay. since i'm from kerala i chose trivandrum so that's valley area right the yeah valley area yeah, yeah. Okay. there only okay so then after like when i went into the interview hall they asked me what are my favorite subjects okay so then like i answered toc the data structures algorithms then i never expected a question from toc outrightly so first question i think he asked me was what is a string at that point okay. itself i i did not, i was not able to recollect what is a string actually i thought okay. every, it's done my like the interview is done that's <laughs> it but then some like i st- i was uh, stuck for 2 seconds but then i like recollected myself and i replied the answer then one thing which helped me was like i answered i did not elaborate it too much i answered it to the point like one or two sentences what was relevant to the question i answered so that helped me a lot because like i got around 40 to 50 questions okay i mean it was too much of a rapid fire so as i told you i prepared like uh, four or five subjects in depth and rest subjects i just prepared from the uh, like you can say uh, breadth first search similar level i knew the breadth of okay, every okay. subjects not a uh, detail because i knew in depth if i went then it wouldn't make much of a sense for isro but if hmm. it was so bark then i would have to change my strategy right, so the right, strategy right. matters a lot then right. they asked me from operating systems algorithms data structures machine learning software engineering compiler design like they touched every every subject everything yeah so yeah. it doesn't matter if you tell your favorite subject it's up to their interviewer on how to ask the question but one thing which helped me was that i was able to recollect the questions answer to the questions i answered it in two to three sentences in a, a clear cut manner so okay. that helped me a lot okay 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 and did they ask you anything from your project that you are doing in mtech project wise they did not ask me but they were fo- they focused on machine learning a bit so like okay. my uh, uh, project was on machine learning. since i was a working professional they wanted to know what uh, what my knowledge level in machine learning was so they asked me some basic machine learning questions uh, thankfully i was able to answer that because i was prepared okay, okay. That, that's that's the way it went and how long it went around 30 minutes i guess uh, 25 yeah. to 30 I don't yeah, remember yeah. the exact time. Yeah, I also remember when I was also appearing, you know, in the first few minutes, I was not able to understand what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, in Chennai, uh, in that room, uh, even in the valley also, the Sivandam also, so they have a microphone, you know, yes. in the temple. So I couldn't, for first 15 minutes, after 15 minutes, I realized that there is a microphone in front of me, mm-hmm. there is a water bottle, there is a notepad, there is a pen. Yes. And I, I once you enter in the room, so I, you know, from the very first, I was so tense. In the second attempt, I'm saying, so I was not able to even, you know, I haven't seen that there is a my, there is a phone there, there is a, some pen, paper, something is there. So there, one one question came where I have to write something. So I was thinking, okay. so that time the person came, you can use the notepad. Then I realized, oh, there is a notepad also. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, similar situation happened to me also. Like I felt tense. Then I thought of uh, drinking some water. I asked their permission. they allowed me but they told me like you did not worry too much then i thought yeah if i drink like water then they would i don't know how they would react but the one thing which i felt was that if you if they ask you a question if you and if you don't know the answer you answer you tell them you don't know the answer honestly right, right, don't right. try to like uh, fool them in framing some jargons into your answer then they'll uh, like catch you from there and then your interview will go downhill yeah yeah it's not a typical it industry interview yeah. where you know people know maybe something maybe they don't know but here people actually know yes. i mean if they're asking something they know about it that's why yes. they're asking so you shouldn't you know think that i will just say something and <laughs> yeah you can escape and yeah, that okay. is not possible not but possible. they accept that truth like the truthness in us if you tell them we don't know they'll accept it they, i like i was uh, around the 50 questions i was asked i was not able to answer four questions so they quickly move forward they did not ask probe me further when i told yeah. them i am not able to recollect it they told okay fine let's move on to the next question that saved me a lot my my like that helped me a lot because i was able to answer more questions okay okay 
and when you come out of that room how is it feeling i mean i mean that was something <laughs> else i i felt relieved to be honest because question after question i was bombarded with questions like i answer a question they ask me the next question i answer a question like it went to and fro i was happy that it was it was ending like i felt that they might ask me from some other subjects like almost all the gate subjects are over now they might want to some other thing but gladly that did not happen so i felt relieved i knew that i had some hope because like i answered this much but then the interview is like relative because you cannot tell based on your interview because if others had performed better than you right. you right. cannot you expect cannot. that so that yeah. fear was there and yeah. i was living with that fear for around 6 months till the result came oh it took 6 months to come out yeah. the result around march the interview over and the results came in september 3rd so or more 6 months i guess yeah 6 months was there what's the good news that you were talking <laughs> yeah. about all india rang one i mean that's a huge achievement i think okay and how your feelings after you when you see your name in the rank one i mean you are trying for so long yeah <laughs> to, to be honest like in telegram group i saw that our results came but then i i as always i did not expect i would get selected so i when i opened the page i did not check my name i just started scrolling from the bottom like whether my name would be in the bottom list like 40 44 vacancies was there for general i mean the uh, not uh, the That's general the merit yeah okay. so like i scrolled it from the bottom i never expected my rank to be on the top i am being very honest so i scrolled till third or fourth i stopped searching after that i knew that my name was not there but then all of a sudden i just uh, look on the top first name i saw my my name like i was literally it, it was there right or only the no no I name wrote... was there to be honest i did not see my name there in the list because i was searching it from the bottom i did not have the courage to search and search <laughs> my name there. that's what that is the truth so what happened with me in 2015 the first time i was huh. i mean i i appeared for the interview not in 16 actually and i i i couldn't make it to my final round so when the result came i searched my name so there was a girl's name whose name starts with k i s h a and i was i mean i saw okay that is there but i the, the name is not matching okay yes. it was like 80 percent matching but not matching so that all happened with me when i searched it so maybe so with I, your case if i mean it's their name but maybe some other son maybe son Sandeep, yeah. Deep, so uh, what yeah. i usually do is i search my father's name like that is nithyan then okay. so it doesn't like not many people have it so uh-huh. i search nithyan then and then i knew that my name i would be the only one this name only so, like, one yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. that's how it happened so i like i felt relieved to be honest like yeah. after 5 years of hard work i was able to finally crack it one thing which i felt was that if i uh, left the interview preparation or like if i stop my preparation in between nothing would have happened like i would have continued my job there in lnt only so like this ha- like i did not stop my preparation right. that helped me it's a very that good first step done like after getting into mtech also you have continued yeah. the preparation i think that is the key thing i mean i what i have uh, learned from you that you as you haven't stopped preparing that's why all the opportunities is coming to you that at least you are you know appearing for the exam and see how it's yes. happening and so it and it clicked right i mean you are doing parallelly the job and mtech and all you are doing but you are continuing the preparation also because i have seen many people leaving their preparation when they you know is to give up because Four years, five years—it's a long time. I mean, I have failed it. I have also prepared for four times for four years per gate. So people used to give up in the between, but I think they shouldn't give up. I mean, they should keep on trying or keep on preparing at least. Uh, and when the you know the notification is out, they should at least you know appear for the exam. Yeah. Yeah, the point you said is very valid because if I had left it in between, I wouldn't be in a state uh, to clear the written test at least. So I right. kept on writing. like i in my mind if i'm being very frank i thought that till 35 you have the age limit to write this right right till right. 35 i would be writing it after that then there is no problem because we shouldn't feel that we have in uh, tried and we have filled that is not an issue but unless and until you try you wouldn't know you will be getting it or not so i kept on preparing and i kept on writing the all the exams i wrote nic i wrote almost all the uh, center i mean psu exams and central government exams for computer science but only one exam i cleared this is isro that is isro I stole exams. I used to fail continuously, but I kept yeah. on writing. I mean, your hard work paid off. I mean, I will say. I mean, that's why you are so. I mean, I will say luck is matter, but you are lucky because you are doing a lot of hard work to do it. Uh, yeah, that's a good. Luck thing. matters so, a lot because in the interview, because they might ask you from the questions which you don't know. So and I, also how the others are performing. That's yeah. beyond your control. Yeah, how you are beyond our control. Yes. How others are performing based on lot of parameters are there. I mean. maybe you you have been asked you have been asked some tough questions and others have been asked some easy yeah. questions 
maybe the other also maybe you are having asked the easy question other <laughs> thing yes so it, uh, interview you know there is a certain amount of luck is there i mean i mean 10 to 15% or maybe 20% luck you mean yeah yeah that's so true. any suggestions for the future aspirants how they should prepare uh, i mean for both yeah. questions and- like from isro perspective uh, what i would say is you prepare the previous year questions very diligently so like that is the like the base you have to build upon because usually the questions get repeated like uh, it might get repeated or the format might be the same like the variables are like the num- like the values might be changing so prepare the uh, basic uh, isro uh, question previous year question papers a lot then even if you fail in one attempt no need to give up like try again like that is the only thing which you can do right that 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 is the thing which that should motivate you like you once you fail if you give up then nothing nothing happens to you if you give up but if you try again then some at some point of time you will be able to in a, you will be in a state to get something so that's what i would suggest keep on preparing prepare from the previous year questions that matters a lot and also try to attempt mock uh, like mock interviews also as a mock test mock test matters a lot okay okay thank you sandeep i mean it was nice talking with you and i think your journey i mean i mean i have also experienced this journey but your journey will definitely motivate students and aspirants who will be you know preparing for not only isro i mean any competitive exam because competitive exams are getting too much competitive nowadays i feel yes. because too many people are writing gate too many people are writing bar too many people because people are not satisfied with it industry or software industry so they are coming back and i think your story that you have to keep on at least attempting the exam till 35 and then see what will happen i mean you shouldn't give up in mid i mean you have the opportunity till 35 so you should i mean this will really really help and motivate people i think thank you sandeep thank you for <laughs> giving us time and sharing your experience thanks for inviting me that's for us. that's okay. the first thing it's my pleasure i think yeah, we have i think uh, i have talked to you that time only yes. right you yes. selected yes. so and we have talked yeah nice nice to talking with you okay yes. that's yes. it